in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Now, theologically speaking, there are two reasons why Jesus cried. The Bible records that Jesus cried um, two times in the Bible, according to the synoptic accounts. Number one, the first time Jesus wept was in John chapter 11 and verse 35. This was when he came to the tomb of Lazarus. The Bible says Jesus wept. And the people say, oh, how he loved him. He wept as a, an expression of compassion over Lazarus who had died. The second reason why Jesus wept on the second occasion is found in Luke chapter 19. When you read from verse 42, Luke chapter 19, please. The Bible says that Jesus wept over Jerusalem. And he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. In fact, let's start from verse 41. It says, when he was come near, the Bible says he beheld the city and wept over it. 42, saying, if thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace. It says, but now they are hidden from your eyes. So listen carefully. Two reasons why Jesus wept. Number one, he wept as an expression of compassion over Lazarus who had died and then the second reason was when he beheld the ignorance of a people he saw that these were a people who were like sheep without a shepherd they were confused and he saw what they could become but have not yet become because of the bankruptcy of light the Bible says he wept not over a person he wept over a city hallelujah in first chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 very instructive scripture dear first chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 first chronicles 12 and 32 the bible says and of the children of issachar which were men that had understanding of the times take note now not just understanding of the things they were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The Bible says the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. Write this down if you're writing. God is a God of times and seasons. This is a very simple but profound truth that as mighty as God is, he has chosen to operate with man within the frame of times and seasons. Say times and seasons. One more time, say times and seasons. Human activities also happen within the frame of times and seasons. Are we together now? That means nothing happens on earth until a time is allotted to it. Are we together? God is a God of times and seasons. Human activities happen within the frame of times and seasons. There's no time we would have looked at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Very popular scripture. It talks about a time for several things. In fact, it says to everything. To how many things? That includes your breakthrough. To everything. That includes your lifting. To everything. That includes your rising, your shining. It says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the earth. Can you imagine that? Very instructive statement. So it is not enough to know what needs to happen in your life. 
you must also understand divine timings. There are people who have found God's purpose for them, but they still have not been able to manifest it because purpose did not coincide with time. You would hear the prophets who say, according to the time of life. Hallelujah. Now, for the purpose of our discussion tonight, there are many words that are translated time as we have in the Bible, but two of them are my concern as far as our discussion uh, is tonight. Number one is called chronos. C-H-R-O-N-O-S is called chronos. Chronos means sequential time. Time as we know to measure moments. So chronos is a word that is translated time. It means the passage of time, like minutes, hour, seconds. That is chronos. Are we together now? That is the first word that I want us to consider, sequential time. When you talk about chronos, you mean time as it is passing, in seconds, in minutes, in hours, in days, in months, in years. But the second word that I want us to look at and that forms the basis for my discussion tonight is called Kairos. K-A-I-R-O-S. One more time. K-A-I-R-O-S. This is the second word that is translated time. Kairos means opportune time. Opportune time, it means defining seasons. Kairos means an opportune time defining seasons you just write them and i'll explain that to you kairos now please look up say for instance a student is in school secondary school js1 js2 js3 you can call that chronos that is time passing but there are moments in that student's life where if he fails a particular exam he will not go forward am i am i right on that there's his junior Wayek, as we know, and then the senior Wayek. That student can afford to toy around with first term, second term, but once he's writing his final exam, he's in a Kairos moment. You get the point now? These are moments that if you miss them, it will take the grace of God. Listen, in every man's life, there are these moments of Kronos every day. But there are prophetic moments called Kairos. And if you do not know how to maximize that time, imagine that Joseph missed that opportunity to stand before Pharaoh. That was a Kairos moment. Are we together now? This is very important. So remember I said that God operates based on times and seasons and that human activities operate within the frame of times and seasons and that we have time as we know as chronos the passage of time and kairos defining you may even want to call them prophetic seasons in a man's life i give you an example in john chapter 5 there was a man who lay at a pool called bethesda is that in your bible and the bible says that at a particular time that is chronos not every time a particular time the angel would come to stir the water and whoever was the first to jump into it that person would be healed of whatever infirmity there was a man there who stayed for 38 years the problem of that man was not ignorance he knew that the activity of the angel on the water could heal. But the problem is that he did not know how to connect knowledge to timing. Listen carefully. He had knowledge. He was not in ignorance. And yet, one year became 10 years. I'm sure he said after 15 years, I'll be fine. 15 years became 20 years. Became 30 years. Became 38 years of affliction without ignorance he had knowledge from day one when jesus came and met him and said will thou be made whole he said listen you don't understand uh every time i want to step in the problem is not knowledge is that i always miss the timing 
and missing the timing makes my knowledge look useless because my knowledge is not able to profit me because it does not coincide with timing are we together now someone who does not even know that that water should heal if he's able to move in first everybody say first say first that's the rendition in john 5 it was not about who was more knowledgeable it was about who could maximize time anyone who could jump in first the bible says that person was healed and for 38 years a man who was full of knowledge but did not understand that the dealings of god with men works within times and seasons Tonight I'm revealing to you why many of you know so many spiritual things and yet your life may not seem to make progress. The problem is not ignorance. The problem is you have not known how to merge knowledge with timing. Hallelujah. Write this down. There is a dimension of grace and beauty that is attached to every season. There is a dimension of grace and beauty that is attached to every season. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. Please give it to us. I want you to understand my teaching tonight. The Bible says he hath made how many things? Please look up. He hath made everything or all things beautiful. Not at every time. Everything is not beautiful at every time is beautiful in his time so beauty and grace is also connected to timing please look up how many of you have seen a tree grow and blossom and then bear fruits that you later would eat did you know that sometimes when you look at the fruit that someday you'll be paying money for there's nothing that looks like beauty and glory there because the time has not reached for instance an orange for instance a mango tree for instance a purple tree or avocado sometimes when you see those fruits in their formative seasons they are not attractive in fact you will pass them with such disdain but give them time something begins to happen with time listen carefully and then the tree you once ignored now you can stand him in front of that tree some would employ all kinds of skills they will climb the tree they will use sticks to pluck down whatever something time now made that thing become beautiful hallelujah have you tried to pluck mango that is not ripe and then try to bite and eat it you will end up being angry with that initiative you took am i right on that but if you are patient and you watch a juicy red or yellow mango you pull it down and you enjoy it. you can turn it into whatever it is the bible says he makes all things beautiful that means if someone looks at you and says your life is full of shame just tell him give me something is happening ah i know i am praying and it does not look like there is profit in my prayer i am studying i've not yet evolved to that version of me just give me time the bible says and jesus increased it's a function of time in wisdom are we together in stature in favor with God and with men if you looked at the baby in a manger you would not want you would not believe that that baby in the manger would one day become the Savior if you looked at the teenager you would the teenager could not call other people and say come follow me no nobody would follow that teenager but with time hallelujah time is powerful time is a mystery did you know that when a woman gives birth or has her child come out and it is not time you don't call it delivery there is another name you call it not because what came out was not a child but it came out not according to time am i right on that so time can even define the names of things that one moment you are praying let this baby not come out I thought the baby was supposed to come out one day the problem was not the baby the problem was timing 
and then another day comes and you are praying and say lord it must be today this baby must come out now it says thou shall arise and have mercy on zion it says because see the person who is praying that prayer took time to understand times the problem was not the prayer request the problem was timing he says lord i have such i know something about you it is the season where you arise and you have mercy upon zion and he gives him the reason why he said for the time to favor her yea the kairos time the time to favor her the time to lift this family the time to roll away their shame the time to give them a new name he says yea the set time has come so a father buys a car and intends to give his son one day but he refuses to give that son no matter how that son cries until he gets to a, a stage called 18 say time and the same boy who was struggling for that car the father would call him of his own volition and say gentlemen you are of age now you are of age an heir as long as he's a child he says he differed not from a slave but he be under, I mean, even though he be Lord of all, but he's under tutors until the time appointed. Can you imagine that? That Jesus himself, as he walked upon the earth, the father never made any proclamation upon him. Not because he was not Jesus, he was waiting for a particular time. It was until Jesus got to age 30, then he went to John, being baptized of John. The Bible says he came out of the waters and the heavens were open. And God said, this is my beloved son. Question, what was he before? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Kairos moments. Kairos moments. There are many, many people who do not understand. Listen, I have watched people who are destined for greatness. Pay the price to get knowledge. But they do not know that there is timing. And listen to me. Do you know these Kairos moments I'm talking about? In a man's entire lifetime, you may not have more than 10 of these seasons. Believe me when I tell you this. 10 of these seasons in your entire lifetime. So when you find those who you call great... It is not just a function of knowledge alone. It is that by the mercies of God or by the privilege of mentorship, they have been taught like the sons of Issachar to discern times. The Bible says, and of the children of Issachar, men who had an understanding of the times. The wise men in the Bible, the Magi, what made them wise? Their ability to use the constellations to understand time. When they saw a star, other people would say, wow, the earth is so bright. And those guys said, no, this is a signification that something is happening. A Messiah is born. Let's go and check the archives. And they checked it. They said, no, we will go and look for him. Hallelujah. Say seasons say time hmm. this is very powerful time is so important the bible tells us in psalm 90 and verse 12 give it to us please psalm 90 and verse 12 it says so teach us to number our days why that we may apply our hearts to wisdom there is a relationship between wisdom and time that when a man does not understand that life is a function of times and seasons there is a level of wisdom that does not happen in the life of that man is someone learning already John chapter 9 and verse 4 please pay attention I want to establish a few things John 9 and verse 4 Jesus is speaking and he said I must walk the works of him that sent me when anytime Jesus himself said, my assignment, as much as I know my assignment, I understand that there is a timing component. While it is day, someone say, while it is day. House now, while it is day, for the night comet. I must establish that relationship while it is day, for the night comet. 
I must invest in prayer now before I have I start having children for the night comet. I may not have the liberty that I have now as a young lady in the next 10, 20 years. It says, while it is day, for the night comet when no man can walk again. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 to 17. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus and he says, See then that ye walk circumspectly. The word circumspect is accurately, as, as wise, not as fools, but as wise. He says, Redeeming the time. What does it mean to redeem? To redeem means to buy back using something in exchange. Listen carefully. To redeem means to buy back using something else in exchange. It says redeem the time because the days are evil. It says therefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the Lord's will is. Listen, when I learned this principle my life changed. There are many people who do not understand their days of visitation. Do you know, imagine the woman in Luke chapter 18. Imagine that on the day Jesus came, she was not in church. She would have missed that season forever. It was because she was present. Are we together? The Bible talks about a man who was so crippled, his friends understood that Jesus being within his vicinity was a kairos moment. They would not take no for an answer. The Bible says they were so determined to see him healed, they tore the roof and brought him in. In other words, we will negotiate with the owner of this house later. But as for now, we know it is not easy to get Jesus. How many people can heal? How many people can cast out devils? We have discernment. This man is the son of the living God. And what Whatever price we will pay, we will discuss the casualties later. But as for now, let a man's destiny change first. The woman with the issue of blood. I hope you know in one of the synoptic accounts, Jesus was on his way to Centurion's house to honor him. He said, I will heal your daughter who had died. The day that daughter was born, that was the day the woman's issue started. They were all 12 years old. So the woman said, listen, you have pain. You've lost a 12-year-old daughter. I sympathize with you. But the day she was born was the day my own trouble started too. And the Bible says, she said, if I may but touch, I will never have that chance again. Now that I have this moment, I know that if, the Bible says she said to herself, Kronos, we don't know how long she kept rehearsing what she would do. But we know that when Jesus came to pass, she said, I will face the consequences later on. But this is a moment I cannot afford to miss. And the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? The disciples said, no, you are, you are speaking unwise. Many people are all over. You said, no, there is a woman who has maximized her, her kairos. This woman understood. She, virtue has flowed out of me. Read the Bible. Those who prepared for this moment were never disappointed. Never disappointed. Those who took it for granted. There were people who met Jesus just once. Did you know blind Bartimaeus? when you study your scripture, Jesus was passing Jericho for the last time. He would never return there again. And blind Bartimaeus understood this. And he said, thou son of David, could this be my moment today? Have mercy on me. And wicked people whose eyes were seen, they said, keep quiet. Beware of those who encourage you to waste your Kairos moment. They may not be there to face the consequences of your aborting time and destiny. The Bible says he cried yet the more. And Jesus stopped and said, what would I do? And he says that my eyes be opened. And he touched him and that was it. Hallelujah. There are many people who miss opportunities to rise even in life within the cosmos 
because they did not understand the power of timing the Holy Spirit kept prompting you go and greet your uncle he does not come into worry every day but now he's around and he's even around for one week that greeting would have given you the capital you needed to start business that greeting would have opened you up to a very new and strange and prophetic season but by procrastination and carelessness and lack of discernment you allowed certain seasons happen there are many men of God the mantle upon your destiny was in the hands of careers but the day they were around you were careless he did is any day is he not this man of God I will meet him one day I will meet him somewhere I know how I will meet him times and seasons I can tell you stories upon stories in my life where I took advantage of certain moments that if I did not take advantage of those moments it would take the mercy of God for me to draw back the blessings that were connected to that moment hallelujah all the sons of the prophet were careless after all, Elijah is a prophet. He knows we will eventually receive the mantle. Elisha said, no. I'm seeing the body language of this man. He's living. I will not go. I will follow you from Gilgal down to Jordan. And he said, leave me. I'm not going anywhere. Jacob was careless about this Kairos moment. In Genesis 28, the Bible says he lay down in loss to sleep. And he saw a ladder that connected the heavens and the earth. Am I right on that? And the Bible says, he even said the Lord was in this place. And I knew not. Do you know the consequence of missing that season was a total period of 20 years of misery in his life. In the house of Laban. For missing that season. The next opportunity would come after 20 plus years. Now in Genesis 32, the Bible says he dismissed his wives. He dismissed his cattle when he was alone. He said, this time I will not miss it. Suddenly a stranger comes and he holds on to him. He said, leave me for the day break it. After my 20 years of carelessness, I have learned by experience the value of your presence. He said, I will not leave you. I will not let you go unless you bless me. The name Israel was not given as a gift it was a man's maximizing a kairos moment hallelujah a kairos moment i will not let you go until you bless me what is your name i am jacob thou shalt no longer be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have had power with god and you have prevailed he touched the hole of his tie and the bible says he blessed him there and the sun arose he called the name of that place peniel for i have met god face to face and my life is preserved many of you today whilst i'm speaking if you are to be honest with yourself you will see certain seasons where some anointings would have come upon your life if only you were determined you heard about a meeting that was happening and it was so close to you but the discipline to get up and wait there and you thought by next week you will meet that man then you heard the man is now dead how many of you had an opportunity to see Reinhard Bonke? You said one day. How many of you had an opportunity to pursue certain mantles, certain graces, and you gave all kinds of flimsy excuses? How many of you had the opportunity to go for certain trainings that will cause you to rise? You didn't know that there was an age restriction. You said any year, after three years. Now when you were ready, they said you are too old for it. Listen, let me tell you. The, one of the greatest manifestation of wisdom in your life is to know that every time does not fit for everything. When you buy a product, there's something they write at the bottom or at the side of it, best before. Everybody say best before. One more time, say best before. That means to get the most of this product, this is the time period you are allowed to consume this product. If you attempt to consume this product outside of this time range, it is at your, you are at risk. You will not get the best and you will not get the most. Hallelujah. I know that at any period, it's, it's better late than never. 
But do you know someone who gets born again at 15 years and another person who gets born again at 60 years do not tell me they have the same advantage in Christ they do but one person has the luxury and the advantage of time are we together now the 60 year old man by the time you say you want to lock yourself for three days your child's school fees issue will bring you out of that fasting period am I right on that the young man can afford to stretch that much because he still has the privilege most likely of being under his parents. Prophetic timings are very, very important. Many of us have missed seasons. Many of us have missed moments. Many of us have missed mantles and graces. Many of us have missed prophetic connections that would have served as a leverage for us. Thou shall arise and have mercy. You see why mercy is in the equation? Because without mercy, that, that, the issue of maximizing time cannot be possible. Time. Time. Read your Bible and watch people who missed out on prophetic moments. Prophetic moments. The woman at the well, that was a Kairos moment. She did not waste it at all. The madman in Gadara, that was a Kairos moment. He did not waste it at all. Unfortunately, there were people who were around Jesus' crusade. They ate bread, they watched miracles, but they were never transformed. Because to them, it was like every other day. Woe betides the student who gets up and finds out that tomorrow is Wayek and he's not been reading. Now you see, the way Kairos and Kronos works is, listen, Kronos is the gift God gives you to prepare for Kairos. That means every day counts. Your maximizing opportune moments is a product of your preparedness. Are we together now? The day that God will line up your destiny help as man of God and now give you the mic and you have the opportunity to preach or pray and that now opens a new door to your ministry that manifestation will not just happen that day it will be a summation of years and months of preparedness am I right on that? I think it was BJ Sachs when I, I, we were in the office and he was, he was the one pastor, he was ministering. And I nodded my head. I said, oh, this gentleman is so anointed. He, I mean, I was, I was watching how excellent they were. Now, you will say he's lucky or you will say it's God's grace. That is the language of mediocre and respectfully speaking, very foolish people who do not understand that what happens, God can open a door now. Someone can see this gentleman and say, you know what, come there is somebody i want to introduce you to and that becomes a new season whereas someone who has been praying and fasting does not know listen according to the law of time and chance everybody on earth must have a kairos moment it is not a prayer point in god's justice system he programmed it that provided you are alive Based on the law of time and chance. It's a time and chance happening to them all. That means one day your destiny helper will pass you. One day the mantle you are looking for will pass you. Whether you have trained yourself to discern it or not. Will mean you continuing in that realm. Or rising to a higher realm. Man of God. You are trusting that God will announce you as a worshiper. Are you preparing for that Kairos moment? Moving around with your invitation card is nonsense. That's not how to prepare for Kairos. Show me the songs you have written that you trust God will grant you to sing to the nations. Show me your consecration and your prayer and your fasting. Show me the rehearsals. Show me the discipline of waking up in the morning. Show me what you are learning about relationships. Show me what you are learning about leadership and management. Show me the them you are following who through faith and patience. And I will tell you, you are maximizing that season listen wishing for the day of opportunity is a waste of your time it will come preparing for it is how to maximize it hallelujah am I right on that so a young man is in the prison and he even refuses to bother about himself do you know why 
because he knew that with time one day an opportunity will come for him to vindicate himself and rather than bothering about himself he was studying the countenance of his fellow prisoners the man called Joseph and he said wine presser you don't seem happy baker you don't seem happy both of them said we've had dreams an opportunity to file his gift an opportunity to refine his gift he said tell me your dreams for free at no charge talk to me and they began to speak you do not learn when you stand before kings you learn in the wilderness the presence of kings is not the place for rehearsal it is the place for manifestation unfortunately there are many people who keep praying and wishing oh god bring the kings who will lift me when they come you are when you do trial and error you recycle seasons of pain the stage is not for learners the wilderness is for learners everybody God trains he takes to the wilderness John the Baptist Moses even Jesus the stage is a testament of mastery that you have worked with your chronos and you have built yourself if you understand what I'm teaching you tonight listen to me it will be impossible for you to not arise man of god moving around with your cv and saying oh which who is the senator now who is the house member now it may not be a wise thing go and file yourself those who are running after greatness listen to me those who are running after greatness chasing it around will never find it because that greatness is looking for certain kind of people become that person that greatness is looking for hallelujah so the lady is quietly somewhere preparing knowing that one day God has put the spirit of worship within my spirit and the nations will hear me sing. I don't have any human connection but one thing I know is that there is a Kairos moment. I will use my chronos every day. The seconds, the hour, the minute while other people are gossiping, backbiting, ill-wishing those who are manifesting. There is a young lady preparing and saying, Lord, I know you have called me to sing your praises to the nations. I may not have an uncle, a father a mother but you be my witness as i train while others are sleeping she's maximizing chronos writing songs praying in the spirit fasting building herself going for trainings if need be i assure you by god's integrity you are watching a champion forming because one day someone will just say we're about to round up i hear you sing leave that one the connection is god's own ministry it's none of your business how it will happen are we together young lady come it looks like a coincidence but you just called someone who has been training for one year and that lady will hold that mic in five minutes and you see God will position all her destiny helpers someone hears her and said I just had something I've been looking for what did you say your name is her limitations no longer become an issue see me tomorrow and you see that lady in one church you see that lady in one program and in two three four days God lives and people say you were so lucky no 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 so let me use this dear man BJ sax again I don't play the saxophone but trust me I know that that thing is not very it's not easy you try it I can borrow it from him and give you now as anointed as you are you blow that thing and the first thing that will happen you will need to see a doctor because there is a skill I've watched my dear friend and brother pastor not play the trumpet and sometimes I'm like this man you play that thing your cheeks you know how someone who has moms there's something called moms where your cheeks just becomes enlarged there is a skill you see when you watch masters manifest you are seeing a testament of the wise use of their chronos it is so effortless you will be mistaken to think the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully man of god the stage is not where you come and quote wrong verses and say things you did not study and say um, i know i researched it but i'm not sure go back to the wilderness the wilderness is the place of training use the stones as your audience use nature as your audience file yourself you are preparing based on the law of time and chance i assure you by the integrity of god your day will come the kairos moment will come 
someone will call you and say help us wrap up this prayer five minutes all that you will say in that meeting is let us pray that's the beginning of your manifestation someone will say who is this brother next week you will be the one to lead opening prayer someone will say be the head of the prayer group and then before you know it after three years here is a great man of god again the language of mediocre he is so lucky businessman i'm into real estate is that true what and what do you know about real estate i have one land my elder brother gave me to sell that is not real estate nobody will call you that way go back and settle down avoid listen i'm speaking to you from my heart run away from premature manifestation use your days don't lobby for visibility go back to the back side of the mountain it is god who brings men from the back to the front there is a law the bible says when you enter a house sit at the back it's a principle sit at the back let your competence hallelujah thank you are we together let your competence mix with timing bring you to the front but if you decide to come and sit in the front because you know those who are sitting in the front sooner or later your lack of preparedness will take you to the back and that in shame and you see human beings are very unforgiving when you waste your kairos moment they mark you as a failure even when you train yourself it will take grace for you to be elevated Is someone listening so whether you are a preacher whether you are a businessman i bring you a message that the dealings of god with men please listen it looks like certain people seem to be exceptional no the same lord is rich unto all the difference is while others are discussing greatness while others are wishing greatness coveting greatness in ignorance there are others who know that life is an interplay between chronos and kairos Apostle, why are my songs not getting to the nations? I have an answer for you. Show me what you are doing with your chronos. When you wake up in the morning and give God five minutes, give your destiny 10 minutes, give the most valuable people in your life 15 minutes, then give mundane things the whole day. How do you become a champion that way? There is no superstition with God. Do not forget that righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne because of systems of advantage like favor listen carefully mercy many believers become lazy and irresponsible as to maximizing these seasons they magically believe that just because they are saved they are born again god will veto these principles and suddenly make them emerge no sir no sir apostle there's an attack on my life I'm a tailor and uh, the people I know that I can sew for anybody. <clears throat> so who has called you now? Nobody. All right. What are you doing now? Recycling your current level or improving to a point that the day one king calls you, all his circle of friends, you become their tailor, all of them together. Can I tell you? I want you to make a vow that you will never enter the palace and have to be sent out again. Joseph made that commitment. In his pain, he did not allow offense to destroy him. He was building himself. Something tells me I am the prime minister. There's no way I can prove it. But I know. And he kept preparing. The Bible says, I love the Lord. He now says that Pharaoh had a dream. He had a dream and God shut the heavens over all the sorcerers. Nobody could see and know. And then the wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. There was such and such a man. And they said, go and bring him. Your Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph. And they brought him out of his dungeon. Am I right on that? And when they brought him out, when he stood before Pharaoh, he shaved himself with the confidence of one who was ready for Kairos. Pharaoh, 
tell me your dream God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace look at that kind of confidence and Pharaoh began to give all his dream and I can imagine Joseph with quietness watching and all the necromancers with their pride hoping that you will say I'm sorry I, I don't know the answer Joseph laughed he said I found the answer all your dreams whether they are cows or wheat they all mean the same thing seven years and then when he said everything he said let me give you a further solution let the king find a man another way of saying I dare you to search if you get somebody like me it was a polite way of daring him let the king find a man discreet and wise set him over the economic operations of Egypt and the king said can we find such a man ladies and gentlemen in one moment without an interview he said I am Pharaoh and only in the throne will I be greater than you the Bible says they called him they gave him treasures are we together they gave him all kinds of names and the Bible says that they put a signet ring upon his hand and then he had an opportunity to marry Potiphar, the daughter of the priest of On. That was his blessing. How about David, the young boy? When he killed the lion, there was nobody to clap for him. When he killed the bear, he did not know that it was adding up in the spirit. One day, he was sent to go and feed his brothers. The same way you were sent to come for this program. You did not know you may just be one day left to your manifestation. One day left to your Kairos moment. And the young teenager stands and he's watching the armies of Israel. With all their dexterity and experience. A beast is barking and all of them are in fear. And Joseph said no, no. This is not Israel. He said, please, can you give me a chance to take on this man? They said, young boy, get out of here. And eventually he went to Saul. And Saul said, whose son are you? That's what I want to know. I want to know the covenant that backs you. That gives you the audacity to stand before him. And he began to tell him a story. Once upon a time I was in the bush. And a lion came. I toyed. A bear came. I toyed. Saul said, all right. If you choose, we'll give you. But take my armory. And when he tried it, he said, no, I was not trained with this. Leave me with my sling. What he trained me with in the wilderness is what I will use when I stand before Pharaoh. Are we together now? Yes. When he stood before Goliath, I meant to say, he stood before Goliath. Goliath was angry. He felt insulted. He said, am I a dog? I will kill this boy, but is this your best Israel? And David stood with confidence. Something always happens to you when you maximize the seasons of training. Mastery erodes fear. You can stand with confidence. Confidence that until your manifestation, only you can understand. And he stood before him. Is someone getting blessed? And he said, listen, Goliath. I will not only kill you, let me tell you how you will die. I will use my sling on you. When you fall, I will use your own sword and take off your head and give it to the birds. You come against me with your bows and your spheres, but I come against you in a name. Goliath died before he died. He died from the confidence of David. With one sling. Do you know? I've studied that scripture. David comes from the Benjamites. They said they were masters at flinging these slings. They could diverge arrows. That you shoot an arrow. And they will use a sling to diverge it. So don't just think he was anointing. Mastery. Mastery. I will not waste this opportunity. And with one sling. He got Goliath down and they began to sing. Women caused him trouble. Saul killed 1,000. David killed 10,000. And David said, I will kill this boy. I don't know where this boy is coming from. Let me prophesy over someone tonight. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. I don't know what seasons you have aborted through carelessness and lack of discernment. But I call upon the God of mercy tonight. May he restore these Kairos moments for you. May he restore these Kairos moments for you. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God. Our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye